afternoon. It's really a great pleasure to be here. Um, this is actually the first time for me to come to visit this beautiful country. Wherever I go, wherever I meet, um, are all new to me. But as I said uh, previously, that I have been longing to come uh, to visit this country uh, because the country itself is not new to me. When I was in the university, um, many familiar names such as uh, William uh, Butler Yeats, George Bernard Shaw, these names were familiar. When I was a student in this university, Beijing Foreign Studies University, that was uh, more than 30 years ago, of course. Um, and also, Ireland is not new to many Chinese. Um, River Downs actually uh, surprises the whole world, of course, including China. We actually invited the River Downs delegation to come to uh, visit China and put on a performance during the uh, Chinese Spring Festival which is the show that is lightly broadcasted to the whole country and also to the outside. So um, Ireland is the country that is familiar and to some extent not familiar. Um, but I think it's, it's, it's wonderful to be here, especially to meet uh, my old friend, um, uh, Braden. Well, as I said to uh, Britain that I want to keep my talk this afternoon as short as possible so that we could have more time for questions and I think that should be the better way to make things clear. I did prepare a, a, a PPT but I feel that it's more comfortable for me to just talk about it and uh, <coughs> share with you my thoughts. My, my talk is divided into uh, four parts. The first one, overview of China's higher education. The second one, internationalization and its characteristics in China. And the, fourth, uh, the, the third part is uh, cooperation with EU and opportunities. The last one is, ab is about my university. Many of you have not been to my university yet, so it's a good chance to brag a little bit about my university taking this opportunity. Um, some scholars say that uh, Chinese higher education actually can be traced back uh, to uh, Eastern Zhou Dynasty, which is 700 to 200 BC, uh, where uh, when Confucius uh, taught to some of the uh, uh, students uh, at that time. Of course, it was the uh, uh, privilege of the elites only in, uh, at that time. And in the late 19th century, um, the outside forces played a larger role in China, particularly in the development of higher education, um, and, and particularly during the, uh, in the wake of the first Opium War, which was in 1840. Um, some Chinese intellectuals discovered numerous Western uh, uh, advances of the, uh, of the science and technology. So that actually opened a very uh, good door for Chinese to understand how education developed outside the country. And the Western university model actually played a very great impact on the higher education system uh, in China. Um, it was um, in 1895, um, people say that the first Chinese higher education institution was uh, set up. It was uh, Beiyang University of Tianjin, which is the Tianjin University uh, um, in China now. By the time, uh, by the year 1949, um, when China was founded, uh, there were only um, 200, a little bit more than 200, actually 205 universities in, in the whole of China. And that was the first um, uh, uh, phase of the higher education in China. And the second phase is called uh, 
is from the year two, uh, 1949 to the year 1976, uh, which actually the uh, Cultural Revolution was uh, 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 took place uh, during this time. During this time, um, um, China actually uh, developed rapidly, both economically and educationally. Um, but at, during this time, China um, copied very much and learned the model of the former Soviet Union. So everything was centralized, and including the, uh, the, uh, the way of education, such as textbooks, syllabus, and, and the way of educating and cultivating people. So we very much copied the model of the uh, uh, former Soviet Union. Um, but we, we, do, we did have uh, quite a lot of uh, development to, uh, of setting up um, uh, many universities and specialized colleges and institutions. The third phase is, um, is um, from 1976 to the year present. present. Uh, especially during, uh, starting from 1977, um, the central government of China headed by Deng Xiaoping uh, uh, make the decision to re restore the national uh, higher education entrance exam, which in Chinese we call it Gao Kao. Everybody uh, wants to go to the universities, has to pass the uh, uh, Gao Kao exam. Um, this actually is called the new phase of education in China. Personally, I myself took the exam, and that was the first exam uh, after the uh, restoring of the uh, system. Um, I succeeded, fortunately, and uh, was enrolled in the uh, Beijing Foreign Studies University. I was lucky because uh, I had the education at the attached school of Beijing Foreign Studies University and the education, relatively speaking, was, uh, was, uh, was uh, very good. Um, with the uh, entrance examination restored, we also developed the uh, degree, such as bachelor degree, master's degree, and PhD degree. So everything actually was, uh, uh, was put in the, in the right track for the development of higher education since then. Um, and also, starting from 1978, uh, China adopted the opening up uh, policy to the outside world, and a lot of exchanges and communications happened between China and outside, and which also pr provided a very good opportunity for students and scholars to go abroad to do the exchange programs. And, and also, the, uh, we, we received uh, gradually more and more foreign students coming to study in China. And as we enter into the late 1980s, um, Chinese higher education has undergone a series of structural reforms. Um, and, and, and these reforms gradually um, uh, made a, a, a very good improvement for both from the uh, qualitative uh, perspective and also from the pedagogical perspective. Um, the specific features of this, uh, uh, of this in, uh, uh, reform uh, mainly in two areas. One is institutionalization, uh, which uh, means that in the past, many departments and ministries, they have their own universities, such as China University for Agriculture, used to belong to the Ministry of, Ag of Agriculture. My university, Beijing Foreign Studies University, used to belong to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. That's why we have so many diplomats. Uh, 
And with this uh, uh, institutionalization, all the, all the universities belong to the Ministry of Education. But of course, uh, institutionally, they have the uh, certain uh, leadership and benefit from the uh, departments and ministries uh, they, they, they used to belong to. But in, in another feature is the uh, um, um, uh, the uh, market economy driven uh, process. That is, uh, every, everything it was done in a plan economy, and then we gradually shifted and given more uh, autonomy and decision making power to the universities. And this is actually very well uh, welcomed and uh, received by the higher education institutions in China. Um, I might uh, give you some of the uh, figures to show you how uh, in, um, higher education is, uh, is looked like um, in present China today. Uh, according to the statistics, in two 2015, which is, which, was, uh, which is last year, we have 2,845 uh, uh, universities with uh, 35.59 million university uh, students. Um, every year, there are about 9.4 million students taking the national entrance examination in China. And every year, there, is, uh, there are about 7 million graduates leaving the university. Uh, this actually is a huge number, uh, according to the statistics that China now has the largest education system in the world. Um, but the point is that China is big in education system. People say that it is not at all a strong nation of higher education. And this is one of the priorities that China is trying to develop uh, to become a strong country of higher education uh, in, in the next five-year uh, plans. Um, secondly, I want to talk about the in, uh, internationalization. Um, talking about internationalization, we mainly talk about three components. One is how do the universities look at internationalization? Uh, in China, we have different perspectives. Um, many univer some universities, they, they think that internationalization mainly refers to the university to have cooperations with foreign universities or foreign uh, uh, institutions. But in fact, other people uh, believe that internationalization in China itself is a way of attitude towards how you run the university, how you develop your strategies towards a better goal that you have already set up, which actually means a lot to a university. My university, for, in, for instance, um, uh, we pay great attention to the development of a relationship with foreign universities but we do not rely on these. What we do is through the cooperation and exchanges, we want to up, upgrade the level of our education, of our teaching, and the most important thing is how we, uh, how we um, um, help our students to uh, achieve a great vision for their future development. And that should be the uh, most important part that we, we, we pay attention to. Um, secondly, people, in terms of internationalization, people talk about student mobility, program mobility, and institution mobility. At the moment in China, we, are, um, we have developed quite a lot of uh, student mobility uh, uh, programs. I can show you some of the figures here. Um, um, in 2015, we 
China, uh, there are 500 and 523,000 uh, people going to study abroad, in which, well, government support uh, students only takes very small proportion, only takes about 42,000. Um, that means more than 481,000 students are self-funded students. This is a huge number. Um, we, 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 we see this as from two different perspectives. Going to study abroad on the, on, on the student part, it is a very, very good way of pursue the knowledge, pursue their future um, careers. But from other point of view, we see that we want to ask the question, why so many students going to study abroad? Uh, this could be a very serious uh, uh, question. Uh, one of the questions deals with um, uh, uh, the, the way of educating our own students in the country. Um, now, of course, there are several reasons for, for, for students choose to study abroad. Number, the first, uh, the number one reason is China is well off. Chinese are rich. They, have, they can afford to send their kids to um, pursue the best education uh, in the world. Second one is according to the traditional ideology. No matter how poor or how rich we are, one of the important idea in Chinese family, according to the tradition, that they want their kids to be the best once they 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 they, they create their their careers. Uh, we in Chinese have a saying that um, every family wants their son to be the dragon and and their daughter to be the phoenix. That which means that they want their kids to be, uh, to be in a better position than their parents. So the parents are, uh, are willing to do everything to provide the uh, education and conditions for their children. But one other thing that we want, we want to, to, to talk about is that whether there should be a problem about the way of education of our own system. That should be the, what the, 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 uh, uh, the thing that we need to consider by ourselves. Of course, China is, is just a still developing country and we have uh, quite a lot of in, in improvements uh, in, in, in education, in developing our higher education. But still, what we need to do is to, uh, um, to think about uh, the way of education for quite a long time since China established. One of the examples that I, that I can give you is that when I was a kid in the, uh, in the uh, primary schools, Teachers are always respected by the students and the focus of the teaching itself actually was on the majority of the students. So when you go to a class or you go to a school, uh, many of the activities are organized collectively. And students, through the organization of the activities, they were brought the idea of collectivism, which means that you respect the way of organization itself. At the same time, you constrain yourself, uh, your individual uh, 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 way of trying to do things differently. 
So a foreign friend talked to me very friendly, uh, very straightforwardly. That he said, "Why you you Chinese students are always good at doing the examinations, answering all the uh, 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 questions, but in other words, we don't see many students in China at the both ends." The majority is in the middle, but we don't have two bad students and two good students. So this is the way of Chinese way uh, of education, focusing on the majority, neglecting the uh, individuality of the students. So the way of education itself actually is a very good point for us to consider. Especially at this time, that Chinese government uh, encourages uh, greatly to be creative, to be innovative, uh, particularly in the way of uh, of uh, uh, developing our own education uh, models. We talk about the innovative cooperative programs uh, the, uh, uh, before the uh, uh, the meeting, and we actually. Uh, um, agreed upon very much about how we should do our cooperative program in a, in a creative way. And this actually is very much encouraged in China and also I'm sure that uh, as we go along um, this may gain a lot of support from the China Scholarship uh, Committee uh, which is the organization that supports, uh, provides scholarships for our Chinese students to come to study abroad. Um, therefore, that um, um, the the way the the uh, the uh, huge uh, students uh, to go to study abroad from China is actually considered from both sides. It's a it's a kind of a um, a good thing, and also the uh, the 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 point, uh, the way that uh, we need to consider uh, uh, very very uh, uh, carefully. So this is the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, basic situation of uh, students are going to study abroad from China. But as we are in at the uh, at this at the time of making the uh, next five year plan, which is the 2016 to 2020, um, all stu all universities in China have actually um, uh, busy making uh, the plans, particularly. Uh, in November last year, when the Chinese uh, State Council uh, issued a master plan for developing higher education. Um, this actually is a very good document that for the universities to uh, create and develop their own uh, uh, plans for their future. Um, which means in November 2015, the State Council uh, issued a master plan for developing world-class universities and disciplines. This is in China what we call double world-class development for universities, namely world-class uh, world universities and world-class disciplines, which means by the year of 2020, there will be from the Chinese uh, government point of view, some universities will get into the world uh, class or top class of the world, and some disciplines in China will get into the top class uh, uh, level. Um, this actually is the document highlight China's effort to raise the overall quality and international competitiveness of its higher education system. Um, talking about the uh, higher education and making the uh, five-year plans in China, 
And I think we need to look at what are, is the situation of the higher education or the universities nowadays in China in terms of realizing their own internationalizations. Um, following the master plan, and also in connection with the uh, next five-year plan, there are uh, several characteristics that can be uh, um, uh, summarized here for the Chinese uh, universities. Number one is 95% of the universities in China have put forward clear development goals for the future in internationalization development strategies, uh, including implementation plans. Many of them have, been, uh, have even set up internationalization working committee to make sure that the, uh, the job uh, will be done. Second, most of the uh, universities, they have been a great shift from quantitative development to the qualitative emphasis. Um, many universities have come to realize that the quality actually is the lifeline for their future development. Number three, being creative and being different have become a dominant understanding of all universities. Um, instead of uh, uh, following other universities or copy other universities model, um, many universities, uh, they are trying to develop their own characteristics and, sp and specialties, which actually is the way of the great, uh, 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 actually is the way that the Chinese government encourages uh, very greatly. Number four, market-driven uh, oriented uh, development has become more and more outstanding for the universities uh, as we enter into a more competitive uh, um, society. Universities all pay great attention uh, to the market development instead of doing what they were told in the past. And the last one, international cooperation and exchanges with foreign universities have become a must almost a must, and all of them are looking for high quality partners for cooperation and exchanges. So these are the mainly characteristics of the universities in uh, developing their own uh, internationalization in China. And um, I think as we go along, um, there will be more and more universities to, uh, to, to, to develop cooperative programs uh, with foreign universities. And next, I think I want to talk about um, the, um, the uh, cooperation uh, between um, the, the cooperation with EU and the opportunities. Um, some of you may uh, be aware that China is very active in developing people-to-people, um, -people, high-level consultative uh, mechanisms. So far, we have developed uh, China-US people-to-people consultative uh, mechanism. We have developed a uh, mechanism with China, UK, France, and EU, and um, Russia, and the last one is China, Indonesia. All these six mechanisms uh, we, we would see is a very good way for China to develop comprehensive uh, relationships with outside uh, countries. Well, to look at all the, uh, these six mechanisms, we can see very clearly that uh, four of them, uh, um, uh, three of them actually, are in Europe. 
So half of the mechanism is located in Europe. China, UK, China, France, and China, EU. Um, which shows that China pays great attention to the development of the relationship with EU, with European countries. Um, Chinese government has encouraged greatly uh, the universities to be strategic, to be supportive in the overall China uh, um, um, strategic development with outside world, and they encourage the university to be think type oriented universities. Not only provide service of their own uh, specialties, but also to get involved as closely as possible in the strategic development and relationship uh, with outside. And talking about the, the, the university uh, that provides the assistance to the cooperation with EU, and we, we can see that, um, as now um, Brandon mentioned, that Professor Wang is the director for, Ch uh, uh, for um, UK uh, British Study Center in my university, and he is also the director of Irish Study Center in my university where we have two study uh, centers um, that could um, uh, make us to, to, to develop close relationship with UK and Ireland. And also we have in our university the Center for Eastern and Central European Studies, which is the uh, center that approved by the Ministry of Education China uh, to do the uh, regional studies for the benefit of the uh, service of the uh, uh, government um, uh, strategies. And also, we have in our university 22 Confucius Institutes uh, that was set up uh, all around the world and 17 of them are located in Europe. Um, as I said, that uh, we also have quite a lot of programs and agreements um, with European countries. Uh, some of them are newly signed uh, in, uh, in connection with the Erasmus Plus program, which is the program that supports the university to do cooperations uh, with the country and universities outside European area. And that, I think, is a great benefit, not only for our European university, but also the universities outside. And we are seeking uh, to develop uh, more uh, 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 connections with European universities with the, uh, with the um, support of the Erasmus Plus program. We also talk about, uh, um, we also want, uh, 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 talk about how we should set up close relations with UK, with Ireland, and with some of the European uh, countries by having a uh, think tank oriented research programs. Um, one of the ways is to carry out uh, mutually interested uh, studies uh, that could benefit not only our staff, but also our students. Um, I, I also, uh, we also talked about that um, in every year in October in China, there will be a annual conference of the China Education Association for international exchanges, which is uh, a quite, which is a quite big conference similar to NAFSA in the United States. During this annual conference, uh, there will be a very big education expo uh, in China. Um, this activity actually attracts uh, great attention from the universities outside 
China in every area of northern, uh, there will be about 100 countries coming to join this, uh, this, uh, this annual conference. And I'm very happy to see that uh, this year in October, Ireland will be the country of honor of this conference. And I, we just talk about this uh, during this uh, morning's uh, meeting with the Ministry of Education people that there will be a large delegation from Ireland uh, headed by, hopefully, the new Minister of Education uh, to China. And we are looking forward to uh, seeing our friends from uh, Ireland, from uh, different universities of Ireland, and also from the Ministry of Education and Skills of Ireland. Um, uh, this could be a very good opportunity for universities to, uh, uh, to mingle with each other and to talk about e uh, with each other, especially to explore the possibilities of developing future collaborations academically and educationally. Um, the last one, the last point is about my university. Beijing Foreign Studies University is the, um, has long enjoyed the, the good fame of cradle of diplomats for the country. Over the past 75 years, we have produced more than 400 ambassadors, more than 1,000 counselors for the country, uh, serving the country in different uh, uh, diplomatic um, uh, areas. I myself was, uh, I was an education counselor uh, before I became the uh, vice president of the university. I, uh, I um, worked in the Ministry of Education, but my uh, two foreign posts um, 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 provide me as the, uh, an opportunity to be a diplomat. My first foreign post was New Zealand. Uh, it was in the early 1990s. And my second post was in the United States, in uh, Houston, where I worked for four years. It, uh, I really enjoyed the, um, the work as a diplomat because it provides you a different uh, view and vision um, to look at <coughs> the relationship and also to develop the um, exchanges and cooperations. Um, the most important characteristic of my university is that this is a collegiate university that produces elites or um, talented students for the whole country. Uh, most of the students after graduation, they work in the diplomatic service in the uh, mass media uh, area, and also in the um, um, uh, uh, national enterprises, uh, big enterprises. Um, the reason that the students can have the uh, good uh, and also high employment uh, of after they graduate is because of the level of education. We focus very much on our own teaching staff because we believe that once you want to have the high quality of students, you need to have the high quality of teachers in the first place. So we emphasize very much on the uh, teacher's uh, education in our university. And many of our teachers, they, they, they are, uh, are very active in the uh, exchange programs with foreign universities. Um, they travel, they learn, and they uh, do the research projects. Secondly, we emphasize very much on the uh, overall development of our students. We emphasize that our students should be multilingual, which means they not only speak one or two languages, but they are able to communicate with people more than two languages. The reason that we do so is because we are uh, aware that language is not only the tool for people to get communicating. Actually, it is a very good way of cognitive development for students 
and also a very important key for students to open a different <coughs> culture, different history, and different value of philosophy. And once they believe that this is the way for their future and for the uh, uh, opening up of their uh, visions, I think that will play a very, very important role for their future career. And secondly, we emphasize very strongly on the multifunctional education. We not only ask our students to be good at languages, but they should also be good at one or two subject areas. So we emphasize very strongly that students should be foreign language plus a subject area or a profession. So in, such a, in this way, in our university, we not only provide 72 languages taught in the university, we also provide students with um, wider choices. We also have a school for international uh, relations and diplomacy, where st the students can um, be diplomats. We also have the School for International Business. We have the School for uh, School of Law. We also have the uh, School for International Journalism and Communication. We also have a Computer Science uh, Department. Uh, by way of doing so, we believe that uh, we could provide uh, a good educational environment for our students to be multifunctional after they graduate. And this university is uh, one of the best universities in China in the foreign language teaching and research. Now we, the fashionable, fashionable uh, word is called uh, cultural studies. So this uh, uh, BFSU is very much uh, uh, focused <coughs> on the uh, um, uh, foreign uh, uh, cultural studies and appreciation and also regional studies as we talked about before this. Uh, the area studies is also one of the uh, focuses of, of our university. Um, I have been bragging quite a lot about my university. I, I, the, the, the most important thing, I think, is to invite all of you, you in the future when you have the chance to come to visit my university. In China, we have the saying, seeing is believing. And uh, so uh, for that, I thank you very much for your patience, and I would like to conclude my uh, talk. And I want to thank you once again for your interest. And also, uh, through this uh, visit, uh, we would like to, uh, uh, to see uh, more activities going on between IIEA and my university in terms of European studies and uh, think tank development about both institutions. So once again, thank you very much.